Congratulations, you just graduated college, ready to move on to the real world and find a job. But, instead of finding a job like this, you find yourself as just another statistic. You know what, though? You're a smart kid. You went to Augustana. So you decide to make a model of the unemployment problem in Benson and see if you can't figure out what's going on. Congratulations. You now have a model. A certain percentage of the unemployed graduates move into the employed pool at each given step. Then, a certain percentage of the total employed, plus the new high school graduates move into the other unemployed, which then have a certain percentage of the total unemployed for that category moved into the employed. You also have, at each step, a certain percentage of re employed retiring and leaving the workforce population totally. The problem, though, is that unemployment just keeps rising in the city forever. That doesn't seem like the way it should happen, so you think maybe it's not a problem with the model, but a problem that could be solved with the actual economy. So you create a second city, and you allow people to move from the first city to the second city to see if maybe that will change the unemployment pattern. The introduction of the second city leads to a very different problem, though. Instead of infinitely increasing unemployment, you now have infinitely decreasing unemployment. And since you can't have negative unemployed people, this points to a very severe problem in our model. We should probably reconsider the way we're doing things. That last model got a little complicated and hard to keep track of. So you decide this time that you want to have a simple model that you can follow from start to finish, step by step. You're going to only have one unemployment pool. You're not going to separate it between college graduates and high school graduates to keep it simple. And you're just going to have one cycle between the employed and the unemployed with graduates coming in and retirees going out. The only things that will factor in are the firing rate and the hiring rate, the college graduation rate, and the retirement rate. Finally, we have some results that are easy to understand. Employed and unemployed populations are affected by the different rates. Increasing the college graduation rate raises both of them because it increases the total population. Increasing the retirement rate decreases the employed because more people are quitting than are coming in. Increasing the firing rate raises unemployment, I mean naturally, more people are getting fired than are getting hired. And increasing the hiring rate decreases the unemployment. So let's summarize what you did. You started with the problem, in this case unemployment. You created a model that you thought accurately reflected the situation as you understood it, but you noticed a problem. You went on to explore this in your original model by adding a second city and found that it wasn't a problem in unemployment, it was a problem with your model. Using this information, you then decided to create a new simpler model that was easy to understand and produced more reasonable results. Now that you have a working model, some directions you could look into in the future would be a mathematical understanding of what's happening in your model, or you could begin to add complications that more accurately reflect the real world and increase the accuracy of your model.